interesting because there was quite a few people left, but uh, I'm glad to be here early in the morning, so if you have any questions after my presentation, you can always come see me out front. But <clears throat> today I wanted to talk about uh, cybersecurity with Microtik. And so my company was founded about four years ago to do cybersecurity in the U.S. for small and medium businesses, and we leveraged the Microtik platform uh, since inception. Uh, because I used to use the Microtik uh, platform for the State Department when I worked overseas and at an embassy. Uh, this is a very popular router across the globe, as you know, routing the world. And so the, the thought of bringing this to be a cybersecurity product is kind of new and novel, but actually Microtik handles packets and routing better than anybody on the planet, in my opinion, when it comes to you know, throughput, packet inspection, identification of packets. And so it lends itself perfectly to a cybersecurity appliance. So if you look at Fortinet and WatchGuard and some of the other competitors in our space for the small and medium business segment, they're, they're a great firewall solution, but they're not a great router. And so they're not moving packets as quickly or as efficiently as Microtik can do. So Axiom has been the first that we know of to leverage the Microtik platform for cybersecurity. We're gonna talk a little bit today about how we do that and also how we apply threat intelligence to our Microtiks. So you can take away from this and do it for yourself. There's a lot of information on the Microtik wikis about best practices for firewalls. Everything that we've done and built uh, in our firewalls has been based on those best practices. Uh, we've also worked with folks like Rick Fry from the US, one of the top trainers in the US, to not only look at our rules, but perfect them and, and make them better. But what is it great about Microtik that I love is the community itself. If you look at Reddit and if you look at Facebook and you look at LinkedIn, the groups and the, the action from the folks inside those groups and the comments have really lend themselves to make our product better. So when you look at open source software, it tends to me to always be more secure because you have so many uh, people looking at it and critiquing it, making that product better. And we're using that same community th theory to make our protections better and to update them every day. So again, my name is Troy Wilkinson. I'm the CEO and founder of Axiom Cyber. We're Las Vegas based, but we have clients all over the world. And our entire founding team has come from the government space. So former FBI agents, State Department, United Nations, European Union. And the one thing that we as the founding team realized is that there's a huge gap in cybersecurity for bringing the latest threat data to clients in the real time. So we're gonna go through this here and talk about some of the things that we do. So outside of uh, hardware, we also are a full cybersecurity company. So we are consulted by companies who want to know what their security profile is. We go in and do vulnerability assessments, penetration testing, uh, full security architecture of how to build your network securely, how to connect multiple businesses together, multiple sites, as well as how to get your remote workers connected to your business. Again, all of this leverages Microtik hardware. Uh, through both IPsec tunnels as well as other encrypted tunnels as well as, you know, BGP and some of the things that Microtik is great at. But once you apply security to that, not only are you routing your packets faster, you're getting your employees connected more efficiently, but you're doing it securely, which is something that has been lacking uh, across the globe. Cybersecurity in general has been a hot-button topic for many people, uh, but people don't know how to really uh, face that. You know, it's down to an IT staff or somebody who doesn't know much about cyber to come in and try to clean up the, the mess. But with Microtik, we're able to bring solutions together so there's less cracks for the threats to fall through and there's less chance that hackers will actually make it into your system. <coughs> so Axiom is an exclusively a Microtik shop. So when, when people ask us, what do we recommend for a firewall? They say, you want SonicWall or Sophos, Fortinet, Cisco. Uh, we're a Microtik shop. There's a Microtik solution for every company that's out there from the smallest business that we have the hex running in and home offices up to the CCR 1072 in the data center or Fortune 500 enterprises. So there's definitely a Microtik that will fit in every situation. Uh, and you know, a lot of people are surprised to hear that a lot of the Fortune 500 in the US uses Microtik as their routing solution. Uh, and we're, we're now changing that to turn it into a cybersecurity solution as well. So why do we choose Microtik? Obviously the same reason that most of you guys chose Microtik is the cost. You know, it's very uh, affordable. Uh, it's very flexible in deployment. You can put it, uh, whether it's at your CPE or your backhaul or your aggregation point, or if you're an ISP or a WISP, you know, Microtix have a place and a home inside there in many places. Uh, it also allows us the ability to run scripts and integrate our solutions and our, and our protections into the Microtik. Most other solutions are closed source or proprietary. They don't allow you to install software 
plugins or other um, algorithms into their systems, which is why we love Microtik. And also the ability to connect the Microtik to our platform. As I mentioned, we use the HEX for our micro business and small homes. The RB3011 is perfect for our small business clients. The CCRs, of course, going up to our medium and, and larger businesses. But what makes the, our Microtix great and what makes Axiom great is our polymorphic threat defense platform, which is simply a large word for ever-changing cybersecurity protections. As you guys know, when vulnerabilities are identified in the world, whether it's a Microtix vulnerability or any vulnerability, it gives hackers a playbook and a way to get into your business. Just this week, there's a new 10 out of 10 severity Cisco bug that's out there. So if you have Cisco firewalls or switches or routers, you need to look at that to patch it. But this gives hackers of a clear playbook on a vulnerability that exists. They can run scans across the internet to see who's running that affected hardware and perhaps run an exploit against it to get full administrative oversight of that network. We take in over 100 different closed and open sources of threat intelligence. And what threat intelligence simply means is it's data points that indicate uh, you know, hackers have a vulnerability or an indicator of compromise. That comes from CVE data, it comes from addresses and URLs and lists. Many people think of Snort, uh, perhaps as a, an IPS filter, so signature based. This goes a little bit deeper and it looks at not only the, the uh, URLs but also the IP addresses and lists. We deploy those data points in real time to our clients so that there's never that gap that hackers use to get into our clients. It's like leaving the keys to your house out in the street. Even if the hackers were able to find those keys, they would no longer work when they got to the door because we've already changed that protection. Over 350,000 data points per day are updated, and there's no memory impact or degradation to the, to the device. We see less than a 5% overhead on the CPU, simply because we're dropping packets in the raw before they get to the IP tables. It's very important that we deal with the threats and matching before it gets into the connection tracking and bogs down the CPU of the device. There are a couple of our firewall rules that cannot uh, avoid being part of the connection tracking, such as DDoS and port scanning. But let me tell you, there's no better product on the market than the Microtik platform for deni denial of service mitigation. It can identify SIN floods, ACK floods, DNS amplification, DNS reflection attacks faster and better than anything that we've seen uh, from a hardware perspective. <coughs> so some of the sources that we pull from are ones that you may know, some of you may have never heard of, such as Spam House and Fork Bomb Labs, Bot Tracker. But all of our all of our data scientists are looking to integrate new sources of threat intelligence every day. And what these simply mean is that we're getting more data so that we can push out real-time updates. We have our own uh, honeypots as well. There's also honeypots that you can subscribe to. There's Talos Cloud from Cisco and Bright Cloud from Webroot. But all of these guys are doing the same thing, and that's trying to keep their clients up to date. The reason that we're more successful than those guys is because we have the plugin that integrates to your Microtik. We can push out more data than the other guys can. And the reason is because they can't push out regular expression matching. They can't push out some of the dynamic firewall rules. Uh, those other vendors simply don't have that kind of visibility into their clients. Those data points, again, are IP addresses, botnets, ransomwares, malwares. One of the things that we're really good at is the dark web. Uh, we have a feed that identifies the newest nodes for the tour, or the exit nodes, which are the dark web. And so as soon as they're published, we push them out to our clients, which means that if, if one of you guys or one of your clients tries to go to a site on the dark web, such as a ransomware gets on their system and it's calling out for an encryption handshake or a crypto jacking miner on the browser or some other infection that's going to call out to a command and control server within the dark web, we're going to block it, whether it's a URL or the IP address. And that's important because that's where 90% of the threats live, is they're trying to hide behind the anonymity of the dark web. We also have data scientists, as I mentioned, writing layer seven filter rules for ransomware and torrents and malware. And simply, those are those complex strings that go into the layer seven tab on your Microtik firewall that match during the deep packet inspection um, of the packet, looking for those indicators of compromise. So I, I can't state this enough, the risk factor to any business or any consumer is from the time that a new vulnerability is identified in the world until you patch your systems against it is basically your, your risk factor, your time uh, for compromise. As time increases, so does your risk of a breach. Updates are critical, and this is not just for your microtics. This is for your Windows machines, for your networking equipment, and for everything that you can perhaps put a patch on, because that's how hackers are getting into our systems. They
they are leveraging those known exploits, those known vulnerabilities. They're looking for people who they can take advantage of, and they're using them to get, gain access to these systems. Equifax in the United States is a great example of this. The Apache Struts vulnerability was known for more than six months. The, the folks at Equifax knew they had this vulnerability within their web servers and their Apache servers, yet they didn't patch against it, and hackers were able to take advantage of their servers and take data on over 145 million Americans, including myself, who was in that breach. <coughs> also, with Microtik, dynamic firewall rules allow us to add offenders to different uh, lists, like port scanners or DDoS. We're able to add people to dynamic lists for certain periods of time. If they offend once, maybe the, we block them for half an hour. If they offend again, then maybe for a day. And then if they offend again, we can block them in indefinitely. This will help you cut down on false positives, but it will also slow down different types of attacks. Uh, if you look at Microtik's tar pitting functionality, this is a great option if you're having a DDoS uh, coming at you, whether it's a DOS or a DDoS. The tar pitting function actually keeps that connection alive, and it uses the CPU power of the Microtik to, to hang on to that connection so that the, con the hackers cannot reset and send more packets at you. The hackers are counting on the fact that they can send multiple packets at you and overwhelm your systems, but if you keep their connections open, they're going to have to spend more money, they're going to have to spend more resources and, and go higher on their DDoS to overwhelm your systems. We've seen the 1072s and the 1036s take multiple 10 gigabit uh, DDoSs in stride when, when configured correctly. So this is how our protections work. When you, when you hear a threat intelligence plugin, uh, it simply means a set of scripts that run on your Microtik. It's an RSC file that you install. It deploys these scripts, which are our data collector scripts and our different malware updates. These run every 10 minutes, about 150 times a day, and they're updating those 350,000 data points. So I know there's a lot of information on Microtik's wiki on how to update threat intelligence, but if that threat intelligence is static, then it's out of date. It has to be dynamic, and because we're updating these constantly, you're always updated against the latest threats. Uh, just as with any firewall rule, you can't set it and forget it. You know, we walk into uh, businesses all the time that have old equipment. We ask them when the last time they updated their system was, and they, they can't remember. Uh, and so basically that, that system is out of date at that moment. So it has to be dynamic, it has to be patched, and it has to be updated to be effective against today's threats. I'm not sure if you guys know this, but even ransomware last year, we thought it was on the decline, but it actually grew 700%. The uh, hackers took in a record $1.2 billion documented money in 2017. $1.2 billion in revenue from cybercrime. That revenue is being uh, deployed back to investing in their own software, so they're making it better. Uh, we've seen some stuff that's pretty scary out there. Uh, fileless malware, that's the newest trend, uh, as well as uh, some of the crypto jackers in the browser. Uh, the same old Java exploits and things like that. My point is that the, the bad guys are spending a lot of money to make their, their exploits very good. And so we have to take that uh, into account as we're trying to protect our systems and understand that it's a, it's a waging war that we have to continue to stay ahead of these guys. You can't just set it once and walk away. So these are the firewall rules, just a sampling of some of the ones that we do. Uh, these rules pop up at the top of your firewall list if you have rules already in place. These will go ahead of it. You can tick any of these on or off as you see fit. Uh, if you don't want to block torrents, that's fine. You just turn those rules off. If you don't want to block dark web, that's fine. And these are based, again, on best practices, but they are dynamic. They're not static. So if something changes, when the WannaCry uh, virus hit, we were already blocking 445 on our firewalls, but we put in a rule here to make sure that we continue to do it properly. When the malware, uh, when the vulnerability came out for 8291, we made sure all of our clients were blocking that port, uh, except on the in internal side. Things like that. These have to be dynamic. You can't just set it and forget it. And then, of course, the layer 7 matching. These are some of the regular expression uh, deep packet inspection matching rules that we write. This one is for ransomware, but we continue to continue to improve upon that. Uh, these are actual expression matching using grep and other uh, different matchers for looking at the entirety of the packet. Somebody asked me this morning, what about SSL? What about uh, encrypted traffic? Uh, I think that we're going to have to deal with that uh, at some point. You know, the whole web is becoming more and more SSL based. Uh, we do not install certificates and we don't do the man in the middle attack here. We look at ports and protocols, directions, DNS, and other indicators that we can match uh, if it is encrypted. 
but currently uh, we're not doing SSL DPI. I'm not sure that that's a possibility yet, but we're working on finding a solution like Gigamon, which is a packet broker that can decrypt and offload the SSL decryption uh, and send us the plain text traffic. So those uh, lists obviously go right into an address list based on what they are, ransomware, Tor nodes, malware, CNCs, and these go into the blocking list that we have within those firewall rules. So very simple. You update your signatures, your definitions, your addresses, your URLs, your IP addresses, uh, and then they're matched accordingly. If they're matched, then they're dropped. Uh, and perhaps maybe even tar pitted if they're a DDoS and identified as a port scan. They're added to the port scan detection list. So most importantly is dealing with this as quickly as possible. So again, uh, we try to deal with it in the raw before it gets to the IP tables. Uh, and then if we can't with the port scanners, we do look at the connection tracking. But by keeping connection tracking turned off and looking at this stuff in pre-routing, we're able to knock it down before it uh, impacts our CPU. So what are the benefits of this? Benefits is allowing you to turn the microtick you already own into a cybersecurity appliance without having to invest in other hardware. I can tell you that in the US, we're actually in front of Cisco's, we're in front of Fortinet's, because those guys are terrible at dealing with DDoS. So this is a holistic approach that's not only applying cybersecurity, but it's applying world-class routing and identification of packets ahead of those other solutions. It allows full layer seven filtering of threats if you have the ability to uh, look at the contents of the packet. And it's not a UTM. A lot of people have said, uh, what about virus protection on the gateway? And we are a strong advocate of putting virus protection where it belongs, and that's on the endpoint. And by overloading your firewall, looking for viruses and spam and malware, uh, you are basically taking CPU cycles away from what it's supposed to be doing, which is uh, processing packets and determining where those go. The network receives over 75% of the attacks, not the endpoints. Most people think if I have antivirus, I'm safe. That's simply not the case because more than 75% of those attacks are aimed at your firewalls, your routers, your switches, the things that have known vulnerabilities that hackers can get into. Even HP's ILO, out of band management, was recently a target of these, these kind of network attacks. So most people uh, think that if they have antivirus on their endpoints, they're safe, but you know the hackers are looking to get into your network, and if they get on your network, what can they do? They can see everything traversing your network in plain text. And so uh, they have you know, unfettered access to your network if they get in. This protects your IoT devices. If you have an Alexa at home or Google Play or some of the Apple Home stuff, those you can't install antivirus on. You must protect the network that they reside on. And by protecting the network, you're keeping intruders off. You're detecting when they're trying to get on and you're knocking them down. That's the only way to protect your ring doorbells and your Nest thermometers. This is based on Microtik's best practices, in-house uh, improvement, and also through the community, as we mentioned. It is perfect for your edge uh, or your CPE, your customer premise equipment, but it can also be used in your core uh, to aggregate your protection centrally. Uh, and those protections must be dynamic. Uh, static rules, they just don't work anymore. One of the most important things of any product that you guys provide or that you consume is reporting. You have to know that it's working. You have to be able to prove that what you're doing and what you're saying you do is actually being effective. So we have a web portal that will allow you to log in and look at your customers or yourself in real time, see what it's blocking, what these uh, rules are matching. It will also show you the traffic graphs of what's going through the router. It will show you who the offenders are uh, and also the traffic counts. And then every month on the first of the month, you'll get this in a nice email form, and that can be white labeled. If you have clients and you want it to come from your company, we can certainly do that for you as well. And it does work with router OS 6.2 and above, but we obviously recommend that you always update to the latest version of router OS because uh, there are vulnerabilities that are always identified in the older versions. Uh, if anybody has any questions following this, I'll be right out front at my table, and I really appreciate your time.